Hi, my name is Carl and this is my channel Gadgets and Tech. Today I will shoot some HDR photos with my Sony RX100 Mark 7. There are um, mainly two different ways of doing this. One is uh, that you shoot in auto HDR and then the camera will uh, automatically process three different images into one HDR image. You can't really make any settings except the exposure difference between the underexposed, normal exposed and overexposed uh, photo. The other way of doing this is to use the bracket function and shoot three different raw images. Uh, the auto HDR is only available as a JPEG function. Uh, if you want to shoot um, and use raw images, you will have to shoot three different photos uh, using bracketing and then you will have to stitch them together in a uh, software and not use a camera for that. I will use uh, Lightroom. The reason that I have chosen this location for HDR photo is that uh, there is a sunset and uh, there will be very light highlights here in the sky and there will also be a lot of shadows and uh, dark details in those uh, buildings and the bridge in the background. One thing you need to know about the Sony RX 100 Mark 7 is that it has no ND filter built in. So it can from time to time be difficult to shoot in scenes like this where you are aiming close to the sun or if there is a very light uh, or if there is a very bright sky. And the smallest aperture is aperture 11, so it can be troublesome. Since a HDR photo consists of many exposures, you don't want any moving objects in the background, so I will let this boat pass. And the reason is that it will cause what you can call ghosting, that the boat is at a different position for east photo, so the merging will not look very good. Auto HDR only works on JPEG files, so the first thing you want to do is to change the file format to JPEG. You will find this setting on page 1 for photography settings. After that you want to go to the Auto HDR settings. You will find that on page 11. And uh, here you have a few different settings. I will use a um, 4EV difference but I really want to encourage you to experiment with different settings here to find the optimal settings for your needs. The wider range of uh, exposure you will have in your bracket the more uh, information and details you will have in the shadows and the highlights. After that you want to set the dry mode to uh, two seconds timer I use the shortcut to access this uh, setting. The reason is that I don't want to accidentally shake my camera when I press the trigger. It seems to be a good exposure. I will now press the trigger and wait two seconds for the self timer. As you could hear it took uh, multiple images and then processed them together. And here is a composite HDR file. As you can see there are quite a lot of details in both highlights and shadows. And as a reference I took a normal non-HDR photo from the same point of view. And as you can see there are a lot less details. HDR, normal. Now let's have a look how you can shoot HDR with the raw images. Which is the way I prefer to do it. To shoot raw HDR you first have to turn the auto HDR off. Then you want to change the file format to raw. This time I will use the quick menu or shortcut for this. And then you set the drive mode to continuous bracketing. And you can make the same settings here. You can choose how many photos you want and what range of exposure you want. As you could hear it took multiple photos this time too, but there was no image processing this time. 
Here we can see the different exposures that will be merged in Lightroom. In Lightroom we have three raw images for every photo, so it's a set of bracketed exposures. We have the normal exposed photo, the underexposed photo, and the overexposed photo. If we take a look at the histogram, we can see that the normal exposed photo has actually a very even and correct uh, exposure. By hitting Command J, we can also see if there are lacking details in the highlights or shadows. And this underexposed photo shows blue pixels where there is absolutely no information. It's just totally black. And in the overexposed photo, we can see that the highlights are totally burned out where there are red pixels. And you can also see in the histogram that it's very overexposed. So what you want to do is to select all three of those photos, right click and select photo merge HDR. I will use the default settings for auto aligning the images. And for these uh, specific images, there is no need for the ghosting. And here is our new HDR photo. As you can see, there are many details in both uh, highlights and shadows. As a reference, we can uh, compare it to the normal exposed photo, which has significantly less details. And since this is a raw image, we can now color grade it. I have made my own preset that I have called HDR Sunset. Let me know in the comments if you are interested in Lightroom presets and I can make a tutorial on how you can make your own presets. Or if you like uh, this preset, I can put the link down in the description. Alright, so here is the unedited uh, original photo, the non-HDR photo. And here is the unedited HDR image. Lastly, we have the developed or color graded HDR photo. As you can see, there are a lot more details here than in the Auto HDR JPEG file. The color grading might be <laughs> prominent or excessive, but I wanted to illustrate the possibilities you have when uh, shooting RAW HDR compared to JPEG HDR. I did also shoot a few more photos from the same session and the same location. And just to show you how easy you can apply the same preset on many different photos. So that's how you shoot HDR photos with the Sony RX100 Mark 7. If you have any questions regarding this, please leave me a comment. And if you are interested in more footage like this and more about this camera, don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe!